Fred Film Radio. Uh, this is Nicolo Comotti here, the 78th edition of the Venice Film Festival. And today I'm pleased to be joined by Pablo Larraín and Kirsten Stewart. Welcome, guys. Hola, hello, how are you? Thank Hi. you. So you're here with Spencer. Spencer, I just watched it. I, with, as always happens with very good films, I, I don't have a real opinion right now. I'm still thinking about it. Very good. <laughs> That's good. It's a good sign, I think. But I guess... Let's just try to go. I, I'll try to probably present you something that you can both give me your take about it. So from your actorial perspective and, of course, your directorial take. So the thing that I keep thinking about is like you tried, of course, that's my way to see it. Your drive, your curiosity was to kind of like fill these invisible gaps, something about the life of Diana. But it was like we will never know how it really will go down. But at the same time, like the the media, the culture behind it and the, of course the utmost curiosity was like we always wanted to know. We always wanted to give her a chance, like what actually happened. And you took that drive, you pushed that curiosity in your own way of course, but it's so it was almost like a an appraisal for for uh, for Diana, a way to kind of like give her a chance to explain to also like almost like a a definite ending, you know, something that can lead us to some sort of closure in a way. But on, I found it almost a counterpoint with your um, with your performance, which was, you know, I was very, very young, but there were moments that you literally reminded, it was like a photographic memory of Diana itself. Like just those images, you know, the sort of like the, the shoulders slightly upward because it was a tension that, you know, something that it was always unexpressed. So we have an extremely almost like real Diana itself, but with your take and your fantastic uh, sort of uh, implement in, into the story. Was it this counterpoint is something that you wanted yourself or this is just me, of course, giving your praise and I would like to, to see the, you know, the, the path that you had and your, your journey in order to get where you wanted as you know, how you wanted to be Diana and of course you how to put the things I together. I understand. So you want to go first? Or? Uh, you go. Okay, sure. Uh, the, the, the thing is that, um, of course, uh, there's a lot of fascination around Diana, um, and, and the royal family is very discreet. You, you don't really know much, and that gives a lot of room for fiction. Um, so this is something that obviously our writer Steve Knight started with, um, but it's, it, it was a way to <clears throat> enter in a psychological space of her. And, and that crisis that is surrounded by <clears throat> the peoples and the conflicts that are just the conflicts that are in that moment of her life are really about the definition of about her own identity. Uh, the way I see it is that it's someone that is reorganizing her life and reorganizing her identity in order to be able to move out of there with her own name. That's why this movie is called Spencer, which is her family name um, and of course there are other things related to you know I don't know other things that happens in the family with Charles um, but the way that I say it is that it is really about a mother mm. you know it's about motherhood somehow and and I just can't stop thinking about my own mother you know um, but I, I feel that there's a there's a layer of magnetism and a layer of mystery that she had. So it's a combination of beauty, motherhood somehow, magnetism and mystery. And you'd never really get to completely understand her. And that's why this miracle here is able to put it and do it. I really think so, put it and do it because she captures it and never lets it go. If she would make a performance that you would deliver all the answers, then I, don't, I, I wouldn't understand why we're watching at the movie. Because then the audience has been, you will, you will deliver something that is completed, that is digested. I think the way that Kristen performed and, and the way the movie is made, it creates this illusion, you know, where you're seeing someone that is being a damaged person, turn into a ghost, and then come back as a person that's healed and is ready to move on. Um, yeah, sometimes you lose sight of the idea that your, your oppression might be this ephemeral, albeit incredibly overwhelming and debilitating thing, but that actually if, if you don't look at it and if, if you can't touch it, it can't touch you. 
that really, you know, there's a line at the end of the movie, and it's, I just don't want giving anything away. We all know what happened, where, you know, somebody in the movie says, you know, you can just leave. And the simplicity of that, uh, that coincides with this moment of crisis that she's going through. Sometimes, you know, it, sometimes it takes falling all the way to the very bottom to look up and go, all right, I'm going to climb the stairs to the top again. Uh, everything that I perceive about her is from the outside, as most, as everyone, other than people that have known her intimately, and, and those people are few and far between, and I think people really feel, like, very close to her, and, like, they know her, like, that, you know, you look at a picture of her, and you, you already feel like you, you're best friends with her. That is, like, that is a unique talent. It's really very rare, and ironically, she herself felt so isolated and so alone. Um, yeah, so in preparing for the part, I think uh, it was just about allowing her to affect me, and just absorbing her, and then feeling free to run and free to dance. Um, because when I look at her, I feel like I don't know what's going to happen. Um, even though, and I don't mean that specifically, literally, in relation to what happened to her in her life and the trajectory of the story, but when I look at her, if I look at footage or a picture or anything, I feel like, oh. <laughs> like the ground shakes, do you know what I mean? You, you just don't really know where your feet are. And uh, therefore, it was, there was no way for me to perfectly prepare for the part. I learned the accent as best I could. I watched her, I looked at her face. I, I then thought it was really important to forget all of those things because in order to do her justice, I needed to feel like anything could happen, like a live, on fire wire, you know? Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your work, because I think you did a really, really good job, really. And I best of luck for everything. Also, thank you for stopping by again, you know, since uh, you came a long way, eh? since the Fred Award, you remember? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, of course I no, but seriously, guys, thank you so much for stopping by, and best of luck for the, for the works. We're talking thank about you. Spencer. Thank you so much. Here at Fred Film Radio, the Festival Insider.